don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no blood slots. Not a lot if you're a grown up. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John. I'm a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you for checking out this live stream. This is our second live stream ever. Uh, we had a really good time doing the first one, and we said, uh, hey, let's do it again. Uh, what kind of inspired doing this stream was uh, Mo and I got together. I see Mo actually is in the live stream. Hey, how's it going, Mo? Uh, Mo and I got together, and we uh, did a video the other day on an Atari 8-bit computer game called Buried Bucks. And uh, you can see it. It's live right now. And uh, like Tuesday, it went live, which is what's today. Today's Tuesday. It went live today. <laughs> anyway, it um, uh, we talked during recording of the podcast that after playing that, it did something to my brain. Like I remembered, uh, well, I've been forever, never forgot, but it reminded me how much I enjoyed these old Atari games. And I found myself going back again and again now and watching... Uh, looking at these old games that I haven't played in a long time and going back to them. Uh, so uh, well, I wanted to do this stream to share more of, uh, hey, T. Valeris is here. Hey, T2, how are you? Uh, he joined the live stream. Hey ho, he says. And uh, so I'm going to use this live stream to share with you some of my favorite Atari computer games. If you had an Atari computer back in the day, great, you'll remember some of these. Uh, if you didn't, maybe you're seeing some of these for the first time. Mo was in that boat. He had never seen any of these games. And uh, it was, uh, he found, hey, I'm gonna, I want these to emulate on my PC. I want to play them myself. So you might find some gems in here. Well, I want to look at some uh, console, uh, some uh, console games and how they ported to the Atari. I want to look at some arcade games and how they ported to the Atari. Uh, and some games you probably have never heard of, but you might find a gem or two in here that uh, could be pretty cool. Uh, so first off though, uh, as we like to do, I want to make sure that, uh, uh, if you are watching for the first time and you are not a subscriber, we would love for you to subscribe to Gen X Grown Up on YouTube. Uh, we also have a website, genxgrownup.com, where you can find all of our aggregated material, every video we post, every podcast we do, uh, every article that doesn't have video or audio attached. They're all going to be here and you can go there and find that material. Uh, I mentioned the podcast. Yeah, we have a podcast. And, um, oh, what am I doing? Great. And the podcast is uh, genxgrownup.com slash pod. You can go there and find the material that we are doing on the podcast. Uh, if you go there, what you will find is um, uh, you'll find not only the most recent podcast, but you'll find uh, everything that we've ever done, the back catalog of stuff. And uh, so let's stretch this a little bit. Yeah, you'll find a back catalog of stuff that we have found. You can go and see all the previous episodes that we have done. Uh, you can even click on one and you can watch it in real time right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our podcast, uh, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Podcast, Stitcher, Tune, whatever it is you listen to. Uh, we would love to have you as a regular listener uh, to our podcast. All right. Enough of that then. So let's get right into some game. Hey, Mo says nice hat, isn't it? I wonder where I got that, Mo. This was a Christmas gift from a friend. <laughs> uh, so let's get right in. Hey, how's it going, Chris? Good to have you on the live stream. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, uh, so let's jump right in. I talked about we played Buried Bucks. Mo and I played together on the, the uh, video that went live. Um, and in, <coughs> After having played that, I did some research and I found out that there is a sequel to Buried Bucks called Chopper Hunt. Uh, I love Buried Bucks, uh, but I love uh, finding out there was a gem that I didn't know about. So this is the sequel to Buried Bucks called Chopper Hunt. Now, if you've watched the video, you know what Buried Bucks is about. Buried Bucks was an awesome game that I played over and over and over because it was a simple game, but it was uh, the design was so great. Uh, and Chopper Hunt added some really cool things to that. And I thought this would be a great place to start because Buried Bucks is what reminded me that I enjoy playing these Atari computer games. And... The idea of Chopper Hunt is, uh, just like buried bucks, you need to go and salvage these things that are buried underground. They're just not all bucks, so the game is not called Bucks, it's called Chopper Hunt. And I'm hunting for this stuff, got oil barrels. Uh, now, other than graphically, it's very much the same game. Uh, you can see they have the sun up there, they have a uh, cloud going overhead. Uh, but kind of the key thing they added that's different, that really changed the game up, is I can now shoot up. I could try to attack the rocks as they're falling, so if I'm stuck in a hole, 
it's not necessarily I just have to sit there and watch my death come spiraling down at me. I can actually shoot above me and try to pummel that uh, that rock. I always love buried bucks. And finding chopper hunt is like, it adds a whole new dimension because there's just enough added. There's some landmines they drop, the turrets that fire some stuff at you. I've used all my bucks. I'm into the second level. Uh, but you can see more about buried bucks uh, if you go and look on uh, uh, and watch that video. I'm gonna look at some other stuff out there that uh, I think you'll find interesting. Um, so first though, let's look at kind of what the Atari could do. Atari was exactly everything that I knew about computers uh, up until I got an Amiga. The Atari computer was everything I had. I went from the Atari 2600 to the Atari 8-bit computer and I played tons of that. Uh, did I shoot something, Mo? Uh, I shot some rocks. Yes. <laughs> let's see. And let's look at some Atari, some uh, some uh, arcade game ports and see how those look. Check out Berserk. Uh, the Atari had some pretty beefy horsepower. I was always pretty impressed with the Atari and what it could do. And uh, Berserk is almost a perfect port. And that's because the limitations that you may or may not have on the Atari, it's just a few colors, the resolution is not too high, it's almost a perfect arcade port. And it's hard to complain. I mean, that's pretty much is Berserk. And it had the speech synthesis even, which I thought was pretty cool back in the day. Shoot each other. Ah! All right. Robots shoot one another. That's the way to go. You can fight like a robot. Sweet! All right, so since we're looking at arcade ports, not all of them look quite as good. Here's Centipede. Eh. Now Centipede, it doesn't have a trackball, which makes it problematic. On our last live stream, we took a look at the Atari 7800. And uh, the 7800 looked much better than this, but that was entirely new hardware. That wasn't even this chipset. Uh, you'll notice that to run in this resolution, they really didn't have a ton of colors. They had like four colors to work with. And it looks okay for Centipede, uh, but not quite as smooth as you would expect, like from the arcade game or even from, you know, a comparable port. But it's decent. But uh, I think it really has to do with how much work the developer put into that. Because look what Donkey Kong looks like on the Atari computer. It is so smooth. Uh, let's see. Select for two-player option. Push start to play. <laughs> Uh, the animation is great, and with just four colors, really creative work here. Ah! Oh, yep. There we go. So, uh, are we streaming okay? I see uh, Chit Chat has stopped. Oh yeah, looks good. Yep. Yeah, DK is on the opposite side. Yeah, so that's kind of a limitation of the fact that we uh, widescreen versus tall screen. Uh, so they took out one of the uh, levels. <laughs> Let's get up there right quick, though. But for a four color at this resolution, they did a really good job with that. Uh, Mario's movement is really, really good. And this, this level progression is right. We went straight from here uh, to the blue screen. Remember the 7800, it for some reason went right to the elevators, which I don't know why. Yep. Hey, MC Murr has joined the live stream. Yeah, this Donkey Kong looks awesome. And you can see some clipping, uh, because what they're painting with is not sprites. So you can see when uh, the characters pass between one another, you'll see some uh, averaging out. Ah! I think maybe Mario is a sprite and that's it. Get down. Let me just finish this level. They did a great job with Donkey Kong in the 8 bit. So, boom! So, while we're looking at uh, arcade ports, let's just go ahead and look at Donkey Kong Jr., which I think they did almost as good a job. Not quite as fluid, but again, not using sprites. It's pretty decent. Ah. It's not nearly as fluid, though. Clearly a different dev team, and it was just... Oh, I'm really bad at this. Yeah, I have played DK once or twice. You're right, Mo. 
But this DK Jr. is not very friendly. I think it looks pretty good, but it doesn't play incredibly well. Yeah, so let's maybe look at one more arcade port. Um, and then we're going to look into the original stuff, which is really what I want to show you. Here's Dig Dug. Mmm. <laughs> A one-color sprite. You know, the enemies are both this kind of maroon and green-looking thing. It's not very fluid. What is that? <laughs> so, yeah, not much. Not very exciting, so... Okay. Now it's time to look at what the original games were. Now, not necessarily original to the Atari. You'll remember that uh, if you were around during this, those computer days, there was a lot of fighting between Atari and Commodore. Uh, the Atari 8-bit line was going strong. Commodore had the Commodore 64, which was going very strong. And I remember my day, that was like, uh, that was like Apple and Mac or iPhone and Android. I mean, if you had one or the other, you, know, you were kind of at odds. Coke and Pepsi. You know, which one of those is the best? Well, you can enjoy both. I just happen to enjoy the Atari world. A lot of these games ran on both computer platforms at the time, including like Apple II, Apple IIe. But pretty much Atari and Commodore, for my money, were, uh, they seem to be the big contenders. Hey, I see Mike has joined the live stream. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good to have you here. Uh, so let's first look at one of my all-time favorites uh, for so many reasons. Um, and that was not it. <laughs> Let's try again. It was... Da, 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 where'd it go? There it is. Now, this is called Minor 2049er. I'm going to do a full video about this game, and it was so good back in the day. It's like a combination of like a, a platformer Donkey Kong-ish game and a Pac-Man kind of like clear the level game. If you've never played Minor, oh, there's so many different versions of it, but I think Atari was the best one. Um, and what's really interesting to know uh, is that there is a secret code on this front uh, title screen. If you know the secret code, you can warp anywhere. I'm not going to spoil it. I'll save that for the video I do about this and kind of the history of this game. But there's so much about this game that I love. Now take a look. So your bounty bot. Your goal is to walk over all of the areas in this mine. So you can see the platforms there that you have to walk on. If I pick up one of the collectibles, it turns the radioactive monster alien things green, kind of Pac-Man-ish, right? Like turning the ghost blue by getting a power pellet. If you collect all these pieces, the pieces collecting them are bonus, they're not mandatory but walking over the entire uh, surface of the platform, you basically have to cover the entire map. Quick, before he changes, there we go. And once you cover the entire map, you have completed that level. Let's get at least to level two and look at some of the... Uh... MC Mercy he doesn't have this game, you're missing out. You should really try this. This is one I had on cartridge uh, and loved having it on cartridge because that means it'll load instantly and you can play it over and over any time. What I'll talk about when I do the full video of this particular game that I loved is it was made by a guy named Bill Hogue and he was only like 18 or 19 when he started Big Five Software. So this was a kid not much older than me and he was making major bank. He learned how to program, he was making uh, games for the TRS-80 and the uh, Tandy Color Computer. And then when the, uh, these computers came out, he migrated over to that. And he, he was in Van Nuys, California, and he was just tearing it up. Uh, I have some video of him on Good Morning America. And, and it's funny to watch the hosts of Good Morning America act like they understand what they're asking them about. Like they would explain, well, yeah, I'm making a computer game. And the host is trying to, uh, trying to play the game, and it's not going great. I always save this for the end. Oh, I missed it. I have one more platform I missed. Uh, it, but the design of this game is so good. It has 10 levels. They did a sequel called Bounty Bob Strikes Back, which I maybe had more levels, but this one really has all the charm. This was the one that I really, really enjoyed the most. Yeah, all right. Cool. Hey, Agile has joined us. Hey, Agile, thanks for joining the live stream. Do, do, do. Bounty Bob, yeah. Bounty Bob for the win, no doubt. I, I'm definitely doing a full video about uh, Minor 2049er. It is fantastic. Uh, okay. So, um, not everything was... Um, here's one that's pretty interesting. Um, so, 
Lucasfilm was getting into making games, and they made this weird game called Behind Jagai Lines. Now, depending on the platform, it might have been called Rescue and Fractalis. It went by a couple of different names, but uh, it had some good production value. This is Behind Jagai Lines. Uh, Rescue and Fractalis, which is the alternate name for it, uh, kind of like Ball Blazer and Ball Blaster, is because the environment you fly around on is fractal based. So if you pass like a tall mountain and a little hill, and you turn around to come back, you'll see that same thing, because it extrapolated the thing. Um, uh, Tom Valera says, are these emulated or do you have the hardware? These are being emulated right now. I'm running the um, Altera 64 emulator. Um, I don't have my Atari computer anymore, sad to say, but um, I did have these, I had all these back in the day. When I migrated to the Amiga, I kind of sold all my Atari, so first I dumped it in a closet, and it sat there because the Amiga was the next big hotness. And then eventually I sold all my Atari stuff. I regret that, not just because I don't have the hardware, because I could get all the software back, but I did a lot of programming on the Atari, and, you know, lack of foresight, I chose to, or didn't think far enough ahead to save all of my programming stuff that I did. I did some basic programming, um, a little bit of machine language and assembly stuff, a bunch of code stuff I typed in from Compute Magazine, all that stuff is gone. Uh, but, you know, we move on, we live and learn, it's like selling off your action figures at, in, the, in, the, uh, in the yard sale. Who knew you'd want those again in 20 years? So, this is all an emulation. Uh, so, behind Jagai Lines. So you're in this amazing little ship. There's some great stuff on the Atari, and they push the limits of what you can do. <laughs> and you come out in space, and you see the planet Fractalis below. And as you go through the stratosphere and the atmosphere entry... Oh, hey! Oh, pull up! So you start to see the landscape. Left and right, you can see how close the area is next to you. Uh, and I'm going to play a lot of this. You can see that I have on the radar, I can see that there is something to be seen. There's a vehicle out there. Um, and you go down and try to rescue these uh, crashed pilots. Let's see if I can find this guy. Down here? There it is. I think landing gear is what I just did. Too, pilot too far. I don't know how to take off. Oh, I can shoot. Engine's off, engine's on. It's been a long time. I don't remember how to take off again. <laughs> but you fly around, and there are these pilots that are landing on the they're on the ground, and you go to the ship, and a pilot might come out of the ship, or a monster might come out of the ship. To kill him, you have to engage the engines and cook him right there on the surface of the planet. Uh, and it's all this adventure of uh, saving pilots. You finish the planet, you leave the planet, and move on to the next planet. And it was amazing... Um, the landscape that you could fly around, the uh, the procedurally generated landscape was pretty amazing. Uh, and that was one that I went back to again and again and again. So there are another really, a couple awesome ones here. Um, what I want to make sure that I mention is uh, Epix was an amazing company back in the day for Atari computers, all computers, EPYX, Epix. Uh, and I think they were absorbed by Activision, maybe? I could be wrong about that. But this was the best racing game for my money. It was called Pit Stop. There was so much cool stuff about it. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. It was more than just a racing game, though. Uh, number of drivers, yes. Number of laps, three. Uh, and rookie. And so by the name that suggests Pit Stop, it's not just about the racing. It's about managing your crew and your team. So as you go around and you run the, uh, you run the course... You have to go in the pit and manage refueling your car, uh, changing the tires, all the stuff that you have to do to manage it. So as you, I'm gonna run on the, uh, see how my tires are getting kind of worn? There are plenty of racing games out there, but the wear on my tires, because I'm you know, kind of running on the side of the road, bumping into cars. So I'll just do one quick lap, just to show you when I pit, that I can change those tires out. Now. The strategy is in, like any, you know, Formula One kind of race, when do you pit? Can I make it one more lap on those tires? Even if I don't run on the edge of the road or collide, I'm going to have natural wear and tear on my tires. 
Uh, so I have enough fuel. Can I? Oh, those tires are getting red now. I gotta be really careful. I'm about to get to the pit. There's the pit. So I go to the pit and I have to decide what to do. I'm like, well, I better change tires. So I have this guy come and grab this tire, get a fresh tire and put it on, grab this tire. Great. Oh, what I didn't think of is I could have the fuel running at the same time. I should have started this. I could have had the fuel guy working. So he can work while I'm changing tires. And you don't want it to overflow, I think, or you lose fuel. And I go, oh, I'll leave those other tires alone. That's fine. Uh, and there, he's the, he's the flag guy. So I'll be back on the road. So it's more than a racing game, which I always thought was awesome. It is a racing game, but it's about managing your pit crew. And if you don't manage that properly, all the racing in the world, your tires go, uh, they, they wear and they'll blow out, or you'll run out of fuel. So you get the racing game, but then you have really the uh, the cool part of uh, almost a simulation of managing that pit shop, the pit crew. Yeah. So I always thought that was really amazing for Epics. Um, uh, T. Valera said he played Pit Stop on a TI. Uh, TI-82? What is that? Not the, I knew the TI-99-4A. I didn't know the TI-82. Uh, Mo says that Epics went out of business in 83. Um, so I thought they were sold, but they just uh, they just went uh, bottom up, huh? That's too bad. Yeah, Pit Stop was awesome. Pit Stop was awesome. <laughs> Gauntlet, Mike Kramer is saying. Uh, Gauntlet was not very good on the Atari 8-bit. I won't make you endure that. Uh, but while we're on the topic of Epics, there's another fantastic one that I want you to see. Uh, there was a sequel to it, but I'm going to have you look at the first one. This is a game that was called... Uh, Jumpman. No, not Mario, which actually was the original name of Mario and Donkey Kong. We know that. This is just called st straight up Jumpman. This is a great action puzzle game. There are a lot of those on the uh, Atari, all computers of that era, action puzzle. Uh, even Buried Bucks is kind of action puzzle. You're doing something, but you have to figure how do I achieve that. Uh, that was very popular. And this one is a devious little game that I really always enjoyed. So let's get in here and hit start or hit option or select. There we go. Start game, push select. Got it. Uh, option key, beginner's fine. Start. Number of players, just me. So the name of the, this level is called Easy Does It. So the idea is this: you have this maze of ladders and kind of uh, ladders and structure there. You have to collect these little gems is what they're supposed to be. And different levels have wildly different things that happen. This one is not too bad. It just kind of, you collect the gems, but parts of the structure will disappear as you collect the gems. Uh, and all along there are, oh, oh, there's a bullet. Dodge that bullet. Bullets will fire. You can hear them shoot, and you know they're coming either from the top or the bottom when they shoot. Now look, part of that ladder disappeared. So you have to be careful. Sometimes you can make it very difficult for you to finish the level if you get those things out of order. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, Mo says it reminds him of Load Runner. Yeah. Uh, we'll look at Load Runner 2, which was one of my all-time favorites. It sounds like it was one of yours, too. Uh, Load Runner was great. Robots 1. So here's a great example. We'll just do a couple of these levels. Robots 1, because there's a Robots 2. So they're these devious little robots. And every time I collect one of the gems, uh, the robots will move to some location. Oh, great. He's kind of pinning me in. So I guess I'll go this way. And where does he end up? Okay, so I can get this one. And they're going to come after you, or not, based on some kind of a movement pattern. Ah! 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 Oh, good, he went the other way. That was lucky. And you can fall a little bit, but not much farther than, like, your... Like, maybe two or three pixels you can fall. Oh, okay, guys. Let's grab that. Ugh. Can I... No! Oh, he got me. <laughs> So you get the idea. There was a Jumpman, there was a Jumpman Jr. Uh, there were a couple of these. Great, great, great games to play. And it's the kind that you come to back over and over again because there's so much variation. I think there were like 10 screens in Jumpman and then Jumpman Jr. More of the same, but even more variation. They added some more, you know, modifications to that. Hey, I see 249 subscribers. We went up one since we started the live stream. So whoever you are, thank you. If you're watching on the live stream, thank you so much. We're one away from 250. That would be a great milestone to hit during the live stream. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, but at any rate, we thank everyone who subscribes. We hope you'll join us. Uh, Gen X Grown Up is all about 
cool nerdy stuff like this that we enjoyed growing up as Generation Xers in the you know 70s and early 80s. Uh, so if you want to see more of this junk uh, and more of our ugly faces, please do subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, okay, so let's move along then. Uh, you know, so I think, Mo, you mentioned uh, Load Runner, and that was one that was on my list. So I definitely want to take a look at that. So here's Load Runner. And I always thought Load Runner started on the Atari. Uh, maybe I could be wrong. It might have just been one of those shotguns that went to, I know it was on Apple and Commodore. Very, very simple. And I have a Load Runner on my phone. It's still around. The concept is incredibly simple. If you haven't played Load Runner before, you're in for a treat or you're in for, you know, a devious addiction. Could be a little of each. So the idea is you're the little, I'm the little solid kind of guy at the bottom. And my goal is to collect these pieces of treasure. And these little drone guys are after me pretty aggressively. Sometimes they're carrying the uh, gold and I need to collect all of it. But I'll tell you, you don't just collect Ah, collecting it is the start, and then you uh, have to find the exit once you do collect it all. And you have a laser that lets you dig a little hole, but you can't kill these guys. Uh, you can kill them, but they come right back. Oh, goodness. Uh, T. Valeris said he misspoke. It was the TI-994A, probably. Uh, yeah, you might have played that on the calculator. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Murr says Hyper Load Runner, he recalls. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of load runners. You're absolutely right. So this, one of these guys is carrying treasure. Oh, no, he dropped it. It's up top. I've got to go get that last treasure. Uh, Load Runner was one of those great games that... Uh, oh, of course you're going to come on the... Ah! Okay. It was one of those great games that had a level editor, which was amazing back in the day, because you could make your own levels. There. So the ladder came up once I got all the treasure, and I could get out. And you can make some just horribly difficult levels and give to your friends. There we go. Uh, and it was one of those that had all that to it. Uh, and that was really cool to have. Yeah, Mo says he spent a lot of hours on this game. Yeah, you and me both. So it's on your phone, by the way. Take a look. It's not too, I think it's 99 cents or buck 99. It's really well made. And it's almost exactly the same uh, mechanic, load runner on the phone. So, all right. Uh, next one. I hope, I hope you find some of the games on here that uh, you'd never heard of. That, uh, that add to your, your addiction vector. Um, so you've probably heard of Spelunky, which is a Steam game. It's on the consoles. Spelunky came from a game called Spelunker that started on these early computers. This is Spelunker. Spelunky, the idea you are a Spelunker going through a cave. This is one that sucked up a lot of my time. <laughs> Murr wants to play Miner 2049er. Yes, you do. <laughs> Don't miss that game. You, it's well worth your time. We might take a look at the Bounty Bob Strikes Back as well. It's worth seeing. This game had a lot of variation. So this is the original Spelunker that Spelunky is a uh, spiritual successor to. Uh, and you're just working your way through the caves. You're picking up dynamite. There's ghosts. Uh, there's That's energy to pick up. Ah! Fall a little too far. <laughs> Mo says the opening music brought it all back. Yeah, yeah, so you played some Spelunker. Oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> hey, now. So, Murr says he loves this prehistoric shit. But I played this, so what do you say about me? <laughs> uh oh, so that little music says a ghost is coming. You can, uh, you can ward off the ghost. There he is. He'll chase me. Get over here. Ugh. There he is. So I can hit the space bar and have a ghost repellent gun. I don't know what it is, but you can get rid of the ghost. Let's go on down a little bit and we can use some of these other tools that we have. We have dynamite. So somehow I still remember the keyboard shortcuts. They're not really cryptic. D for dynamite. And then you haul ass and it blows up these big pyramids. Yep. Uh, you also have a flare you can shoot to ward off bats. Oh, I'm running out of energy. Quick, ener oh god, where's the energy? I forgot to collect energy. Oh, that's terrible. Oh well. Or just die. That refills your energy. <laughs> uh, Mer says he just gets into ancient looking games. Many I played, but uh, many of haven't. <laughs> oh god, I'm terrible at this! Uh, T. Valera says he's... Uh, oh, brought it all back. Yeah, that sound. 
Are you talking about the game sound or that annoying you're out of energy sound? Both of those are exciting. Uh, okay. I'm terrible at this. That's Spelunker. <laughs> it's, I remember being better at this game, but maybe not. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So we are at the uh, we're at the halfway point of our stream. I want to take just a second, uh, if you're joining us for the first time or not, to remind you about Gen X Grown Up and what we do. We love, we uh, very much encourage if you would join us for more of our stuff. We have a YouTube channel where we do lots of cool stuff like this. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No games, no guns. Not allowed if you're a grown up. No more washing shows till sunrise. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. And in case the YouTube content is not enough, we have a webpage, genxgrownup.com, where you can go and see all the things that we do, which include all of our YouTube content, all of our articles, and also the podcast. Podcast? Did I say podcast? I did. The Gen X Grown Up podcast is every Thursday. If you go to genxgrownup.com slash pod. Um, oh, oh, hey, Thomas Ching has joined us. Hey, Tom, welcome. He says, before you go, please talk about the hardware you're running this on. I'm not going yet. We're going to be here for the whole hour. I'm just taking the midpoint break. We'll get right into that, and I will talk about that. Uh, yeah, so the podcast, you go to genxgrownup.com slash pod, and you can listen to our podcast in real time, or you can subscribe to it so you always get the latest episode when it drops. Also, if you go to genxgrownup.com slash social, you can find us on all the social networks. Uh, now, social networks other than Facebook are all kind of uh, alien to me, but we do our best to, uh, to stay up to date on those. We have a Facebook page you can go to. Uh, we encourage you to join on there. We'll post whenever we do new content on there. We also have a Twitter account. So if you use the Twitters and you know uh, all the Twitters and how to do that, we're at genxgrownup.com. Not very hard to find. Uh, we also have an Instagram account uh, that we're trying very hard to get up to speed. Uh, and I don't think anybody needs all of those, but we encourage you not only to join us and follow us there, uh, but if you like what we're doing on Gen X Grown Up, what helps us the most, if you will watch what we do and then share that out. And you remember the old uh, shampoo commercial, you'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends. We pummel our friends with this content all the time. They know what we do. You're probably in that group. You know what we do. What helps the most is to spread the virus, infect other friends that you have, other nerdy geeky friends or Generation Xers who like media and tech toys and gaming that want to see or might be interested in any part of what we do, go out there, share what we do out on those social networks if you would. We really appreciate it because it helps us to grow, helps kind of build the brand as they say in the marketing biz. Um, and uh, in case you're wondering, it's uh, pretty cold where I am. It's currently uh, 37, maybe colder, 35.4 degrees in Jacksonville. We're going through a super cold snap uh, in uh, Jacksonville right now. Colder, seasonably, unseasonably cold. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's having its toll on us. Uh, in the live stream right now is MC Murr. I'm going to give him a quick shout out because not only is he uh, visiting us for the live stream, but he is a good friend of the show. He is also the guest host on the podcast, has been for the last couple of weeks, and will be for the next couple of weeks, since George is in his on, on his vacation overseas. Uh, MC Murr, uh, great YouTube content creator. He has a live stream that starts at 9 p.m., right after our stream. That's where I'm going when I shut down this stream. I'm going to go watch him. If you enjoy anything that we do on Gen X Grown Up, I encourage you to do the same. Head over to MC Murr's channel on YouTube. That's E M C W E M U R. He'll be having a live stream there as well. Uh, and that'll be right after this. So I'm going to get back into some great games. We've got about uh, half the stream left to go. Uh, welcome, by the way, Tom. I said uh, he asked about the hardware we're using to run this. Really, really simple, actually, the hardware I'm using. Uh, I love the tech toys, is one of the things we talk about on GXG. So a pause to talk about that is great. Um, so I'm using OBS, which is, uh, I think it's called Open Broadcaster Software, something like that, It's but it's OBS. And uh, in it, you can build templates that you have different pieces of material. It's no hardware, it's pure software. I can build scenes. One scene includes uh, this cover photo. Uh, one scene puts the web browser in there. 
uh, one scene lets me see the emulator running. And I can switch between those. I had a scene that allowed me to run that live trailer a moment ago. So all those pieces I can switch to, they're just scenes I can load with a little dissolve between them. Uh, and then for the emulation, I'm running really just uh, running the uh, Altera 64 Atari 8-bit emulator. Uh, someone asked earlier before you got here, am I running this on real hardware? I'm not. I don't have my real Atari anymore. Uh, but Altera is a very faithful reproduction. Uh, oh, T. Valera says open broadcaster software. I was super close. Uh, yeah, thanks, Googles. <laughs> thanks very much. Uh, so that's what we're doing. If I covered your question, Tom, let me know. If I missed something, something else you want to know about, let me know. I'll be glad to share it with you. I'm learning this right along with anyone else who's watching. So let's check out another cool Atari 8 bit game. Uh, and there are plenty. Let's start with a dumb one. <laughs> this was a game that I always made fun of because it's just so Welcome stupid. To Womper Stomper. Welcome to Womper Stomper. This is someone was on acid when they thought of this game. Uh, and good on them if that's what you want to do. Uh, it made no sense to me. There are two things I remember about it: the open, which I'm going to play again. Okay, had some speech synthesis. Uh, but whenever you start a level, this weird, nasally voice says, Watch out for nails! That always stuck with me. We used to say it all the time to each other. The premise is, you're a foot stomping ants at a picnic, and there are nails. So... Player one. Alright, so I'm squishing ants. I don't know that you're going to want to play this over and over. Oh, there's an anteater. He's after the ants, too, I guess. At some point, he'll say, watch out for nails. We have to hear that part. Oh, here's an apple for some reason. I can stomp on an apple, I guess. Come on, ants. It's, it's, it's goofy. MC Murr says, I was on acid when I got my, uh, my best Mario Kart times at Super Nintendo. <laughs> on the Mario Kart Elvis NES. Well, hey, you know, they say it opens up your creativity. So, we've got to hear him say, watch out for nails. It's the dumbest thing ever. Probably at the end of this level, I'm guessing. I've yet to even see a nail. This is a great use of my live stream time, I know. But it's just so memorable. That anteater is going spastic. Good lord. Oh, something happened. There's two players. And now I'm player two. He's not saying watch out for nails. That's really sad. Player oh, well. So, <laughs> this, this stupid game I played over and over and over. Not because it was good, because it was dumb. Uh, and I think that's a big part of kind of the nostalgia. Not everything we have nostalgia for was awesome. It just kind of brings you back to the experience you had at that time. And Whopper Stomper falls in that category of dumb things that I just play because they're dumb. MC Mercer's got to run and set up his live stream. That's right. Remember, MC Mercer's live stream at 9 o'clock. I can tell you it takes some time to get set up. You got cameras, you got software, you got hardware. Mer, I will see you at 9 o'clock. I'll be there for your live stream. Thanks for stopping by. Much appreciated. All right, that's Womper Stomper. Um, Mr. Robot and his Robot Factory. This is another great one that's worth looking at. This is another one that's very, very puzzly, and it had an editor. Uh up in there we go all right infectious noises so kind of like the bounty bob in minor 2049 your object is to clear the level of all the dots you can just follow about your height not much more clearing all the dots going through and it's not a big deal it kind of like load runner the game was not the game was not the game the ability to expand on the game and make your own maps and uh, go to a bulletin board system and upload the maps and then go and download them and plug them in. There, I finished the level. That's Mr. Robot. It's very colorful. You gotta like that about it. It has lots of elements that you can do. I'm not gonna go into the editor. That doesn't matter. But um, if you can find another guy who enjoys playing this in emulation, this has a lot of legs because of how you can uh, expand on it and make your own levels. And I'm sure nobody has them around anymore, but you can make your own anytime. Um, so that's a lot of fun. 
Um, T. Valera says, did you really just say bulletin board? Yes, I did say bulletin board. Listen, there's a fantastic, um, like, eight or nine part documentary called BBS. If you haven't seen it, I think it's all up on YouTube, or if not, you can find it to stream somewhere. Um, if you watched, if you used bulletin boards back in the day, this this gets into the nitty gritty. It's it's reminiscent. It teaches you history, and uh, and honestly, I loved it. I only made it through about six of the episodes. <laughs> you only take so much. Uh, I'll go back to it again. But there's a great documentary you should go and watch. If you use BBSs, you will have flashbacks big time watching the BBS documentary. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, several more I wanted to show here. Uh, so we talked about we looked at Minor 2049er. Uh, let's take a quick look at the sequel, which was Bounty Bob Strikes Back. They just kind of expanded upon the same game, uh, but they added a lot more to it. The big metric that they, big metric, the big mechanic, I'm trying to say, that they added, that was really different if you played the old game, come on, hurry, 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 was you can jump, you can change the distance of your jump. It used to be you could just jump like that. And that's, you had to figure out where to, where to start your jump to land. But now you can do the kind of Mario-y thing where you can put English on it. You jump and then do a direction. So that means you could jump a short distance by moving just before you land. That was new. Uh, we have some elevator or, uh, uh, elevators, teleporters, really, that we had in the old game, too, that are pretty neat. Uh, yeah. Teleporting is always cool. Uh, and so this is more of the same, but it's... A good more of the same. Uh, so if you liked Minor 2049 or you thought that was cool, Bounty Bob has a lot more of that. I think, I don't know how many levels that had. I never played that a ton because really Minor 2049 was enough for me, but Bounty Bob is really, really cool. Okay. A um, couple more uh, arcade titles that I want to look at just to look at the power of the uh, Atari 8 bit. So, first, a bad one. Eh! <laughs> oh my god what is going on this is a horrible pac-man and i remember having it Ugh. you have to keep moving he stops moving if you stop moving so i move if i stop moving he just keep moving it looks terrible it plays terrible i'm not gonna subject you to that however <laughs> uh because of that we had a bunch of other games trying to mimic pac-man because everybody wanted a pac-man right there was this terrible one called jawbreaker but it actually played probably better. Candyman. Candyman. Yeah, yeah, we know. Okay, can I play the game? There we go. So Jawbreaker ostensibly was a better Pac-Man than Pac-Man. Same idea. The guys turn blue and you can eat them. Yeah. That evolved into a bunch of crazy stuff like Jawbreaker 4. I don't know what they were thinking here. Oh, no I mean this just this just reeks of 80s computer game does it not so it's still jawbreaker you're just some dentures of some kind that have to collect all the dots and of course you candy because that's what teeth do uh, I won't bore you with it but at the end of the level there's a toothbrush that comes out and brushes your teeth because I just you, you did a great job of uh, jawbreaking eating whatever yeah but the reason I show you all of that is to show you um, a much better uh, Pac-Man representation, and that's Miss Pac-Man, and they did a really good job with that. Wow! Night and day! Look at that. Pretty good. Not bad. Uh -huh. The maze looks better. Ghosts look better. Yeah. Played a lot of Donkey Kong in the Atari, played a lot of Miss Pac-Man, because that was the era. Those were the games we were playing. And uh, to have good versions of those on your home computer was, you know, that was as good as gold. Uh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see, what's the other one I want to show? Oh, here's an amazing one called Pathfinder. I think that's the one I want to show you. Ah, that is a horrible game. I will not show you that. The one I want to show you is slightly different. It's called Past Finder. Slightly different. I'm going to go grab that one. I moved a lot of my favorites into a folder here. Uh, but I, I misremembered which one that was. Here we go. Yeah. This, I think, is an Activision game. Let's see. 
Da, da, da. Yeah. So here is Past Finder. Uh, Activision game. Activision not only just making games for the 2600, although, you know, Activision came around because they were disgruntled Atari programmers who wanted to go do something different. Past Finder is an amazing kind of like endless runner sort of game. Take a look at this. So you pick where you want to go on this map, this overworld. You have some special weapons you can use. I won't bore you with that. But you're this little like robo spider thing. And the past finder, it's like this, uh, it's a future, it's uh, post-apocalyptic or whatever. And the past you're collecting, there are these floppy disks that were left around and you have to collect them that have you know records of the past on them. That's the whole concept. I've not yet seen one to show you. But we will get one in just a minute. Those bonuses you can enable are very much like pay-to-play phone games these days. Where, oh, if you have this, you're saved from radiation. Or if you have this, you're... Uh, oh, there's there's the disc. There's the hard disc. Got it! So I got some of the past. I've salvaged some history. And this, it's pretty simple. But, man, you can... The fact that there's a big overworld, and there's so much to do, and there's so many bonuses to do. I'm gradually seeing how radiation level is increasing. I It uh, looks like I have to... A uh, deradiator. So I'm going to use a deradiator. And that'll bring down my radiation, because I have to manage that. It's not just my lives, but then we got some... Oh, ouch. I'm about to say there's some Zaxxon-esque areas where you either stay low or jump high. And that was an example of me doing the wrong thing. Uh, oh! That's painful. In a moment, I'll show you going under one of those things. But remember Zaxxon, how you had to pick the height that you're at when you, when you played... So yeah, here's a, here's a low one that I have to stay under and not jump. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on in this. I always loved this one. So Past Finder is another really cool one to check out. We've got about, uh, about 10 minutes. I have time just for a few more. Uh, McCoy and Barkley would argue me about teleporters. Yeah, they might. Uh, Tom says uh, maybe teleporters, transporters aren't so cool. Yeah, spreading my molecules across the galaxy, Dad Gummit. Yeah, he was not a big fan of that, was he? <laughs> uh, so back into my uh, favorites that I put across, the ones that I wanted to show you. So I looked at kind of what they could do with uh, some of the uh, high color palette things, but the Atari had a super high resolution graphics mode that only had like two colors. It was just a black and white. But because of how the Atari was, uh, uh, the way its graphics system worked, if you had two pixels next to each other that were white, it would be white. If you had a pixel that didn't have an adjacent pixel in, the, in an odd column, it would be green. And if you had an even column, it would be purple. Really weird, but they could get like four or five colors out of this two color mode. It's how like the big uh, adventure games like Ultima or whatever, they got their graphics done. So that graphics mode, which I think was graphics mode eight, they called it, doesn't matter because they did programming, but uh, so this is Choplifter. They decided to do it in a high resolution mode uh, and they used that graphics mode. So what you'll see is kind of weird looking. But this is how I played Choplifter. This is how I remember Choplifter. So you can see how the different colors are by emulator, by the way, can handle reproducing those graphics modes and reproducing those different uh, those different colors, even though realistically we can handle the pixel perfect. Uh. So if you played Choplifter, this was the Choplifter I knew. It looks kind of hideous. But it plays so well. Ah! There's my guys. Let me just kill it. I'm sure there's a tank after them. All right. Come on, dudes. Get in the helicopter. Hurry. 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 Ah! Tank. <laughs> Mike says he needs the 3D glasses to play this. It kind of has that look, doesn't it? Now, we look at Choplifter on the Atari 7800 on the last stream. It looked awesome. But uh, this is how I remember it. It has some really good physics. Ah, tank! Don't shoot my guys, you jerk. Like, look how the helicopter lands. I always love that. Uh, kind of bounces a little bit. And that's more than uh, that's more than they needed to do. This is a Broderbund game. Same guys that did Load Runner. And remember, Load Runner was kind of like a two-color mode as well. Let's save some guys. There they are. Off we go. Oh, there's one more guy. What are you doing way out here? Get the helicopter. All right. I don't know who I'm shooting. Ah! Oh, yeah, I forgot. If you're flying too fast to hit the ground. Okay. So I just killed some guys. 
we'll uh, we'll remember them fondly and not go back and pick up more guys. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. Karatika we talked about in the Atari 70, uh, 7800 stream. This was the version of Karatika that I played so much. I actually know how to play. Jordan Mechner, this guy, I think is the same guy that did Prince of uh, Persia. And this was is, is was an amazing karate game. Listen to that. So epic, kind of sweeping. I know it sounds lame these days. It's old kind of sound, but you had to not be running, and you could kick or punch, and you had to plan out how you're going to fight these guys. And it's all about kind of like fighting and retreating. Get in there. But if you treated too much, I mean, you, you had somewhere you would need to get. So if you did too much retreating, that's problematic. <laughs> Tom says a moment of silence for the uh, helicopter full of uh, POWs that I left. Thank you. <laughs> uh, almost got him. Then we get to see the big guy, big bad guy. There he is with his attack eagle. He's sending more bad guys after me. Karanika is so good. <laughs> They're approaching each other. There's just a building of suspense. They're approaching one another on the battlefield for fisticuffs. <laughs> yeah. And there he is. That's Karatika. All right. Great game. If you don't know Karatika, there's so many ways to play it. It's a great game to play. Oh, my goodness. Uh, before we end the stream, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is um, if you like any of these games, you want to play them, um, of course, you can find the software. It's freely available on AtariAge.com, or you can go get emulators. All that's there. Uh, if you want to contact me at admin at genxgrownup.com, I can send you the links to the, those. I'll also put links to them down in the um, description section of this video once it goes live. Uh, but if you don't want to do all that, uh, you should definitely check out archive.org. Uh, now that's like the full, it's kind of the Wayback Machine lives there that kind of archives the internet. But archive.org has added... Um, has added emulation right into their software. So not only do they have these now public domain pieces of software you can grab from there, you can grab the .atr files, but you can play many of the games right in stream. Uh, so like, you know, here's the Hideous Dig Dug. You can go to this Hideous Dig Dug and you can actually play it right here in your browser. Loads the metadata, the game file list, launching an emulator in the background. Da, da, da. and it boots an Atari, and you can play it right there, eventually. There it is. So there's that same Dig Dug we played. You can go to archive.org and play most of the games I'm showing you. Uh, so don't feel like you have to wait, or that you, it's, it's a barrier of entry, you can't do it. You totally can. And with archive.org, you don't even have to really know how to do anything other than type in a web page. Uh, you can plug in your keyboard, or you plug in your mouse, use your keyboard, however you want. It's very versatile. They do a really good job there. I have time for just a couple more games. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not bring up one of my all-time favorite games. I'll just let you hear it first. If you know this game, you'll know it from the song. Anyone on the chat? There's a little delay. I will go ahead and say, this is Mule. Multiple use labor element. Yeah, Michael Kramer knew. He was right. Mule, absolutely. I'm not going to play a bunch of Mule, but I remember just loading up the title screen to listen to the music sometimes. We did a, uh, a video on Mule where I forced George to learn how to play Mule with me. Uh, he lost, uh, but I hope he gained an appreciation for Mule. Uh, Mo also knew it was Mule. You know from that song. Um, there are versions of Mule that you can play online, on the internet, but they are pale in comparison to the original one here. Uh, what I just want to do is real quickly point out that One Planeteer, that's me, could start. The whole object is you're colonizing a planet and it's kind of a uh, eco, it's a, uh, not ecosystem, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's a finance kind of uh, simulator. It's supply and demand, all that kind of economy, right? 
I'll pick blue. I'm always the Packer because he looks like Pac-Man. And the point I want to make is that, uh, what's the name of the planet that Mule takes place on? It's clipped off just a little bit there. It's the planet Errata, which is Atari spelled backwards. Now that's super lame, but what I always loved was no matter what platform you play Mule on, everybody lands on planet Errata. So I always assumed we had ownership of Mule because it was the Atari planet. Yeah. If you haven't played Mule, you owe it to yourself. You should definitely check out Mule. All right, so I have time for just maybe one or two more before the stream is over. Um, and there's one more I want to make sure that I showed you, and that is uh, Montezuma's Revenge. Uh, no, not, not the runs. There's actually a game called Montezuma's Revenge. It's a great platformer. Mm -hmm. Ah, just hearing it. <laughs> It's just this platformer, kind of a crazy little thing, but it plays so well. It's so smooth. It's hard to describe just the mechanics of it. Da, 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 da. Uh, it's, it's bright. It's colorful. Uh, it's got glowing rolling skulls. Who doesn't want that? I have a key so I can open a door. Ow! I can jump on a snake, apparently. I have another guy mechanics of it are just so good and smooth. The way he jumps is great. So Montezuma's Revenge is a pure platformer. Oh, an adventure game. I think that's a slide. Yeah. And I think a sword. Oh, those are burning. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, poof. <laughs> just little details like that in this game are just really, really cool. Ah, so that's Montezuma's Revenge. Um, and uh, I think probably the last one I'm going to show you is not an original game, but if none of these interested you, uh, I want to show you a game everybody should know that was a console game on, by Activision called Pitfall. I'm sure you know Pitfall, Harry, the Pitfall Adventure. Uh, well, Activision, when they moved to the computer, they started making the same games. But I want to show you how much better the Pitfall experience can be um, on the Atari computer. Look at that. Does that look cool? You all know Pitfall Harry. Just a little more detail, a little more variety. Ah! Ah! Oh, I missed the double jump. Yay! Yeah, like that. That's how pros do it. So it's still Pitfall. It's still a great game. Ah! Don't do that. Hello, alligators. Ah! I was going to stand on his head, but I failed to. <laughs> so, even classic games you know, and most, of, I won't say most, a wide, wide variety of classic games that you know on, con, on early consoles ported over because they were starving for content. Okay, don't forget, uh, if you are watching for the first time, would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, don't forget, we have a podcast. You can check out all of that on our website at genxgrownup.com which you can see right here. Uh, everything we do is here on genxgrownup.com. You can always find material there. There's search, everything video, everything audio, audio that we do, it's all there. I would encourage you to listen to our podcast, which is more of this. Uh, every week we have a podcast, uh, one of them where we talk about current uh, media and games and tech, and every other one is a backtrack where we talk about a specific item and we dig in deep to it. MC Murr is a co-host on the podcast over the last few weeks and he is about to start his live stream in just a few minutes so if you head over to youtube and look for mc murr that is e m c double -E, e m u r he has a live stream that's kicking up in just a few minutes it's more cool stuff like we do uh, i really hope that you've enjoyed this look at some atari 8-bit favorites so many more out there that I could have shown. I didn't show all my favorites. I want to show kind of a kind of a broad spectrum of some of the things that soaked up all of my time when I was a kid. Uh, I really appreciate you joining. Uh, we'll do a live stream again sometime in the future. If you have suggestions, uh, you can write into us at admin at genxgrownup.com or just comment to the video down below after we post it. We appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Subscribe to Gen X Grown Up by clicking right here and enable notifications so you won't miss a thing. Use the comments down below to tell us what you think, and while you're there, a thumbs up would be great too. Please share this online wherever you hang out. Connect with GXG on social networks by clicking right here.